Hey guys, I'm Evangelist David Pate. You're watching Real Word Outdoors and um, coming to you this morning with a burden on my heart as many of us in our country are uh, concerned about what's going on over in Missouri. I know we've had a lot of people like our page from Missouri and we're praying for you guys and you know not only in Missouri but all around our country we're having up, uprisings and, and uh, demonstrations. Some are peaceful, some are not. And um, a lot of people are asking what, what is the answer? What is the answer to what's going on? And, and first of all, let me say my heart goes out to the Brown family. Losing a child has to be the ultimate uh, heartache for anybody, for any situation, to lose a child. So my heart goes out to them. And uh, also my heart goes out to the officer because he was doing his job. The evidence shows he was doing his job. And he was, uh, his life is forever changed. And so it's just a bad situation for everyone. And everybody wants to know what the answer is. And um, for the answers, we can only turn to one place, and that's going to be the Word of God. And I want to take you to where I believe the answer lies, and I believe this answer is going to be foolish. It's going to be a foolish answer to some, and to some it's going to be very offensive. It's going to be an offense. But God has told us that's what this answer will be to those that don't believe. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. The Word of God says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness but to the to us that are saved it is the power of god for it is written where i will destroy the wisdom of the wise i will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent where is the wise where is the scribe where is the disputer of this world hath not god made foolish the wisdom of this world for after that in the wisdom of god the world by wisdom knew not god it pleased god by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe the answer is offensive and foolish because it's so simple. The world uh, wants to have a, a complex answer, an intellectual answer. This answer will be offensive to philosophers, intellectuals, the activists that are out there trying to do things with head knowledge. You know, it's offensive. God chose the cross because it was simple, yet very offensive. Because when you come to the cross, you have to examine yourself. The cross illuminates. Martin Luther King Jr. made a statement, It is darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And the point is, Jesus Christ is love. He's, the, he's God's demonstration of a perfect love that was sent to a cross to die for all mankind. At the cross, there's unity. When we come to the cross of Christ, we don't see everybody else's faults and problems. We see our own, and we see a forgiving God that give His Son as a sacrifice to die and shed His blood all over that ground that we may have forgiveness of sins and then rose him up right he rose the third day to be with the father in heaven and makes intercession for our very prayers and and he sent the holy spirit to comfort us and my prayer is today that the holy spirit is comforting and moving on the brown family and and and, and all across our nation uh bring comfort and peace but we've got to understand that when we leave the cross when we go deviate from what god is from his wisdom and, and what he has uh showed us the direction, then we're going to keep having problems. We're going to keep being divided. The cross unites everybody. At the cross, there's no black. There's no white. There's no Asian. There's no race. Jesus died for the white people. He died for the black people. He died for the Asians. He died for the Indians. He died for all men, all women. Whosoever will come unto him can be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And when we receive Jesus Christ by coming to the cross on that level ground, it doesn't matter if you're a rich man, doesn't matter if you're a poor man, doesn't matter what the scenario is or situation is in your life. When you come to the cross of Christ, you come to a place that's level ground, humbly before an almighty God. It's offensive for this answer to go forward to some civil rights leaders. We know there's some that have stolen the word reverend and put attached it to their name. There's nothing reverent, reverent about anybody stirring up trouble and division among races to, to make themselves wealthy. What we need to do is, is become unified as a nation, black, white. We need to come together and realize that we serve one God, Jehovah, the great I am, the only true living God, and His Son, Jesus Christ, crucified for our sins. When we realize that and come to that knowledge, then all our differences and all our divisions fade away. The cross unites. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The cross illuminates. You see uh, darkness comes to light. You know, there's a lot of people that are looting. A lot of people that are breaking into businesses. How does that honor anybody? How does that show uh, compassion? Or how does that show um, anything other than just sin? 
it's blatant open seeing us an excuse to be it to, to do what you normally already want to do which is go rob steal and pillage you know if you need to be born again if you're doing that kind of thing the cross come to the cross of jesus christ and give your heart to christ i understand frustration i understand being upset i understand being from the south what racism and prejudice looks like i've seen i understand what you're talking about but here's the deal Jesus does not want you to go out and rob and break windows and destroy property. He wants you to humble yourself and forgive, give forgiveness, and he wants you to show Christ in you. Martin Luther King, from my understanding, the quotes he made and the life he lived, he tried to show peace and love and humility, and he tried to show sternness in what he believed was right. He stood for what he believed was right, but he'd done it with peace. Jesus wants us to live our lives in peace, live our lives in love. And he says, if you can't forgive others, how can, he can't forgive you. So my prayer is that in our nation, black, white, whatever, will come together in unity and love and peace and forgiveness and realize the answer is not a civil rights activist. It's not a f philosopher. It's not our government coming in and trying to solve anything. It's only by the wisdom of God, and that is the cross of Jesus Christ. What we consider to be something offensive and simple, God has chosen to make something beautiful and demonstrating his wisdom god has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and as i stand here before you today he definitely chose something foolish to confound the wise when he called me to preach god chose the foolishness of the world to confound the wise what we don't think will work what we thought was foolish or simple god uses it you know why because he gets the glory no flesh will glory in god's presence we need healing we need love and we need forgiveness. My prayer is God will come. To, we'll all come together in the Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in humility, at the foot of the cross. Until next time, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in His sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, Amen.